Hey everyone, Psychotronic Squirt Gun coming at you with another comic book haul. And uh, this is where I just pull from the chaos. You know, I always have comics coming in and uh, it's just random stuff that I selected. So without further, without further ado, okay, 1971, we have Superman 236. And this is what Easy Comic Reader would refer to as Superman in peril. Because <laughs> they open up a gates, uh, open up a gate of hell. So, um, yes, Kurt Swan art within. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful. So many comics to read and so little time, right? Superman. Okay, 1983. Fantastic Four, 252. But it actually goes like this, doesn't it? And it's actually... Um, I don't know. It was an interesting story by John Byrne. It was kind of an awkward read since you opened it like this. You know, it has the tattoos in it, I think. There's the uh, cityscape. And this is where uh, Reed Richards decides to... Um, he decides to explore the negative zone because that was a great idea. Meanwhile, he actually, he lets um, Annihilus in his world, <laughs> which is terrible. So, yeah, and Reed Richards did not attack, uh, detect Annihilus in his world. And he's on to this adventure in which uh, he saves, the Fantastic Four save um, a superstitious race. From a mechanized city, but come to find out the city was alive. So um, it was a fun it was a fun read. Absolutely. But it was kind of an awkward read. Should I do this? Keep it like that. <laughs> okay, so from uh, uh, Fleetway Quality. Probably early 90s. Um, it's a reprint of the 2000 AD, you know, Dread Rules. Right? And uh, this should probably go back up. I love, I collect all of the uh, reprints, reprinted stuff. Judge Dread, you could find this on the cheap. I very much. Uh, um, I want to, you know, my, sometimes my brain doesn't work, you guys. <laughs> this sucks, dude. Sometimes, you know, it's just, it is what it is. But uh, I recommend anything from Eagle Comics that reprint the original uh, 2000 AD stuff, that right there. That's the number one of Judge Dredd, for, Judge Dredd from Eagle comics and this is i guess then they turn into quality then they turn into fleetway quality because they merged or something like that but dread rules you gotta freaking love that okay 1992 we've got uh untold tales of spider-man very cool uh green goblin cover the one complaint i have when they brought Norman Osborn back is that they just should have it should have been a total event where he was just wreaking havoc, you know, Cause supposedly for 20 years he was behind the scenes, you know, pulling the strings and all that stuff. You know, your basic your, your basic uh, comic book plot. But when he came back and revealed who he was and killed uh, or disintegrated Ben Riley, 
it should have been like a horror story where he just is just wreaking havoc on and just destroying things. But no, dude had to stay <laughs> behind the scenes as some like Lex Luthor character or something. It was really stupid. That was back in the 90s. <laughs> oh, okay, so we got a, a beautiful comic here. 1986 from First Comics. It's Nexus 19. Steve Rude. Beautiful, beautiful stuff, right? And I've been putting Nexus together, so I, I kind of like reading from the beginning. I read his origin story. Look at that. And I loved it. So this is beautiful. I do like to put the runs together before I start reading. I'm just kind of weird like that. But yeah. See it. See it on the cheap. Get it, right? <laughs> okay, 1987. From Imperial Comics is uh, Nazrat. I love my indies from the 80s. Uh, both these are indies from the 80s. Nexus and Nazrat. Uh, I think Nazrat, that's a cool uh, cracked spoof there. Nazrat was, uh, there was, they were spoofing on the uh, the Dark Knight when it was coming out. I think that was, I have those. Pretty cool. Cool black and white. Um, I love this stuff. <laughs> Next issue. Eyeball. Eyeball man. But yeah, man. Gotta pick them up. Indies from the 80s. And the last one... Uh, the last one we'll show is... Um, from 1976. Eternals, number one. Awesome. Jack Kirby. Defining the Marvel Earth and how it came to be. From the space gods, right? The day of the gods, right? You know, they later become celestials. But I read this and uh, freaking beautiful. Um, it's pretty much Marvel's ancient astronaut theory. You know? And uh, that was very popular, I think, in the underground in the 70s and 80s and stuff. The ancient astronaut theories that all the indigenous tribes looked up into the stars. And they were actually gods. They were actually highly evolved technological beings, right? So uh, what the celestials did, although they're not called celestials here, is they, they, they tinkered with the uh, life on Earth. And created three races, the Deviants, the Humans, and the Eternals. The Eternals ended up being perfect, like, powerful beings that roamed the uh, universe um, with their mind and their body and all that stuff. Humans, you know who they are, pretty much barbarians, <laughs> thinking they're evolved. But Deviants are interesting because, uh, for some reason, they're in their genetic uh, pool... They, they don't have a consistent form. So they look like all types of different species. Every generation and every being within that generation looks different. So, uh, and the Celestials uh, frown upon the Deviants. And I, th I just think it's a great idea, you know? Um, I think that, they, that Marvel, um, if ever could get... If, if uh, Disney would ever sell Marvel, which they never will, it's like R.I.P. Marvel, right? Because Disney doesn't 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 go to the original stories like they should. Anyway, that's it, you guys. Thank you for watching. Please check out uh, my live show uh, later today. It's called Chaotic Comic Book Cover Displays and More with Friends. Please check out my two dollar claim sale on Mondays with cheap comic collector and uh yeah i'm out see you on the next one